on truths that transform. It's a very serious matter. And the God who loves us doesn't want us to be destroyed. We have believed the lies of Satan rather than the truth of God. I realized that my surgery hadn't made me a man. And it was confusing because it had made me legally male. You know, and I looked like a male and everybody perceived me as male. But I knew the truth inside. Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. There is perhaps no greater sign of our culture's moral confusion than the current gender controversies. There is simply no historical precedent for how quickly we have overthrown the basic realities of our world in favor of a new idea called gender identity. On today's program, we will see how this new idea is forcing our institutions to twist themselves into contortions to conform with what we all know to be a falsehood. And we'll share some resources that will help you and those around you to understand what's at stake and to respond biblically. As we begin, the distinction between men and women is as old as humanity itself. The differences are so deep as to be universal and obvious. Yet, there's a cultural movement that has captured government, media, and academia, and it cannot answer a question as basic as, what is a woman? John Rabe has more. For all of human history, the categories of male and female have existed, and they've been clear, until now. With the ascendance of the transgender movement over the past decade, we now live in a culture that claims not to know. Just a couple of decades ago, every institution of society would have orbited somewhere in God's design for what it means to be a man and a woman, uh, what gender is, what a marriage is. We all understood these terms, even you know, the military, the Boy Scouts, right, uh, academia, banking, we all understood these terms, corporate America. Now what's happening is that we're moving at light speed away from God's design about something that literally defines what it means to be human. We're doing it because the opponents and the culture war are saying, we're gonna call you names. We're gonna shout you, we're gonna, we're gonna dox you, we're gonna call you a bigot. And because people don't have the courage, because institutions don't have the courage, they're literally caving on what it means to be a human being. The central claim of the transgender movement and its cultural apologists and enforcers is that one's gender identity has nothing to do with one's biology. Gender, they say, is completely a matter of the mind with no basis in external factors, including the body. Thus, someone can have male biology but identify as female, and it is incumbent upon the world to treat him as a real female and everything from pronouns to restroom accommodations. 93% of Americans say we are our own sole determiner of moral truth. When you apply that to sexuality, Freud taught us that we are at our core sexual beings and sexual authenticity is the key to flourishing. And so if truth is what I think it is, and my body is what I think it is, I can choose whatever gender identity or sexual orientation or can express whatever direction I wish in terms of my sexuality. And that's what the culture now believes. If you start from God's word in uh, Genesis, Genesis 1.27, the Bible says, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So the Bible tells us that humans are made in God's image and there's two types, males and females. If you're taught that no man determines truth, then ultimately you can say, I can define gender any way I want. I, 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 you know, because the man determines truth, therefore everything's subjective, therefore I'll define it this way. That means somebody else could define it that way, someone else will define it that way. And then you start to realize it's not just um, transgender, there's like how many different genders now? It, it's whatever anyone wants to define. And that's what we see playing out culturally. In a recent appearance before Congress defending abortion rights, 
Cal Berkeley law professor Kiara Bridges had this exchange with pro-life Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. You referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. Would that be women? So um, I want to recognize that your line of questioning um, is transphobic, <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence by not recognizing them. Wow. Do you believe that uh, men can get pregnant? No, I don't think so. <laughs> so you are denying that trans people with this thing? And that leads to violence? Is this how you run your classroom? Are students allowed to question you? Absolutely. Or are they also treated like this? Where no, 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 they're, they're, not they're the opening up people to oh, violence. We have a good time in my class. You should jump right me. Back. You might learn a lot. Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire recently made a documentary film examining this issue. The film poses a very simple question. What is a woman? And it turns out that the gender ideologues find that an excruciatingly difficult question to answer, as demonstrated when Walsh appeared on the Dr. Phil program. You stood up here and said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. What is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not myself. You the word. So what did you mean when you said trans women are women? If you don't know what it means, means, right? So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who... That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? What's to each their own? Not only does this embrace woman as a true objective category altogether, but it also leads us into Gnosticism, the idea that truth is only accessible through a personal, subjective, mystical encounter. For example, my truth. I have to live my truth. What is that? That's Gnosticism, pure and simple. Not the truth, but my truth. Um, this is very common, for example, in, in discussions about transgenderism and so on and so forth. The transgender movement is really the culmination of this, this, this Gnosticism within, you know, critical theory. Um, it, 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 it's the ultimate expression of, I know, and not only do you not know, but you can't know. But then it takes it another step further. I know, you don't know, you can't know. And if you do anything other than bow to what I know, then you are acting not just insensitively, but criminally. But because the categories of male and female are so embedded in our design, our purpose, and our biology, the pesky truth keeps popping back up, no matter how earnestly the politically correct claim to deny it. Recently, actress Bette Midler ran a follow of her deeply liberal fans by tweeting, They don't call us women anymore. They call us birthing people. Don't let them erase you. Her fellow leftists took this as an attack on transgender people, since, of course, in that view, people who give birth can be either male or female. But Midler was right. Believing that womanhood is nothing more than a psychological self-evaluation eliminates actual womanhood altogether. Singer Macy Gray ran into a similar controversy after appearing on Piers Morgan's British television program. And uh, I will say this, and everybody's going to hate me, but as a woman, just because you go change your box doesn't make you a woman. Right. Sorry. You feel that? I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want me to call you a her, I will, because that's what you want. But that doesn't make you a woman, just because I call you a her, and just because you got a surgery. Of course, while Gray was merely stating the obvious that pronouns and surgeries don't turn a man into a woman, a firestorm of verbal attacks came from the far left. Within three days, Gray abashedly went on NBC's Today Show to begin her penance and show that her forced re-education had begun. I think life is an education process. The more you sit yeah. with people, the more you talk to people, it changes your perspective. So has, has your perspective changed, do you feel? I've, I've learned so much, and I, and I think, um, you know, being a woman is a vibe, and it's something I'm, I'm very proud of, and it's, a, it's very precious to me, and, and I, I think that if you, in your heart, feel that that's what you are, then that's what you are, regardless of what anybody says or thinks, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Midler, Gray, and other feminists have found themselves in the midst of a conundrum. Their cultural leftism means that they are obligated to support the team for transgender in the LGBTQ agenda.
but their feminism and frankly just common sense causes them to recognize that biology is a central component of being a woman but cultural marxists are continually turning up the heat on those who refuse to get with the transgender program as gray and midler found out but in addition to erasing womanhood which is actually happening as men identifying as women now compete in numerous collegiate sports set aside for women this false ideology has proved incredibly harmful because it goes against that which we cannot deny men are no longer lovers of truth when you have a society that says hey you know what they're no longer he made them male and females now 156 genders and counting depending on what you have to say when you have people saying that we're going to stick to the science and at the same time we'll tell you that will thomas who knows leah thomas is a female swimmer when you have that rejection of truth you, we shouldn't be surprised when lawlessness ascending accompanies that rejection of truth we're buying into these fictions about gender and about you know what what is real in the mind versus the body uh, without any question at all. And we're doing it only because we don't have the courage to say, you know what, I disagree. And I'm not gonna count, I'm not gonna bend my knee to this fiction that you're promoting. Indeed, love for our neighbor and the reality of every human being's creation in the image of God compels Christians to speak the truth and love on this issue because rebelling against God's design brings us misery. Laura Beth Perry knows firsthand Feeling that she identified as a man more than a woman, she tried to live as a man for nine years. All these changes I was making was so exciting and I really did begin to feel like it was going to be real. And, you know, each little change seemed to confirm that and every little thing would sort of add to that. And as people called me Jake, uh, I had all that affirmation and it really seemed like it was going to be real. But there was always a little bit of doubt creeping in. I finally had to admit that I was depressed because I realized that my surgery hadn't made me a man. And it was confusing because it had made me legally male. You know, and I looked like a male and everybody perceived me as male. But I knew the truth inside. It was Laura's encounter with the one who created and designed her that finally settled the issue. When the Holy Spirit really got a hold of me, the whole Bible started screaming at me that I couldn't live that way. I mean, not screaming in a bad way, but just like the Lord began speaking to me over and over and over that this was not who he created me to be. I look back and it was like the, the picture of the, the shepherd carrying the lamb over its shoulders, over his shoulders. And I really just came, I came home, but I can't explain how he began to transform me, how he began to fix all the brokenness. And it was like a, a pot that had been completely shattered and he just began to put it back one piece at a time. Or like the, the layers of an onion as he peeled away this false masculinity that I had. And I realized that I had been a girl all along and this wounded girl began to be set free. And I, I really can't explain it other than Jesus has done a miracle in me. And I'm so thankful now. I have no desires or feelings to go back. And I, I just, I look back and it's just been a miracle that he has done in me. Politicians and activists are filling the airwaves with misinformation about abortion. But our free resource, Quick Pro-Life Answers, gives you clarity on the propaganda, answering questions like, is abortion now illegal? What about cases of rape and incest? Why should nine unelected judges decide what a woman can do with her body? And much more. Download Quick Pro-Life Answers from our website today. Or we'll send you this valuable resource at no cost or obligation to you. Just call or write asking for Quick Pro-Life Answers to help you respond clearly and biblically. Unfortunately, the kind of confused thinking we see on display in the transgender movement is not new. It has its roots in the philosophy of the left, which says that humanity is basically good and that human nature is endlessly malleable. Truth comes from within, and so there is no external reality to conform to in this view. Our authentic existence, our culture now tells us, comes from fully expressing whatever we feel we are inside at any given moment. Transgenderism is merely the most recent way it's playing out, but we saw it much earlier in the sexual revolution 
which banished God's design from the discussion and encouraged everyone to unshackle their desires. The result is nearly 63 million abortions in America, and nearly half of the children who still get to be born are born to... Kennedy shines the light of truth through this fog of cultural lies in his message, The Biblical View of Sex. Not the chill. Unless one has been residing on the moon for the past four decades, he knows that we have been through a revolution in this nation and in our world during that time. It, of course, is called the sexual revolution. Now we remember the French Revolution and uh, the American Revolution. One was against King Louis, another against King George III. But against whom has this revolution been directed? Well, the answer very simply is that it has been directed against God. It is a rebellion against his reign and rule. It is a rejection of his law. As Christ said, they declared, we will not have this man to rule over us. And so many have said today. I had a young man say to me one time, he said, I know Dr. Kennedy that having sex with a married person is wrong, but what about two unmarried people? having sex. And I said, well, of course, the Bible says that fornication is a sin. What's that? He did not know, he was a young man in his early 20s, he did not know what fornication was. The Word of God declares that neither adulterers, nor fornicators, nor homosexuals, and several other things, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. You see, the Bible is very clear. It says that all of those that hate me, and we demonstrate that by our rebellion and our rejection of his rule over us, all of those that hate me love love death God is the living God he is the God of life he is the giver of life he is the one that promises to those who trust in him life everlasting life abundant he is the God of life and whenever we reject his commandments whatever they be we inevitably bring upon ourselves death no, it's a very serious matter. And the God who loves us doesn't want us to be destroyed. We have believed the lies of Satan rather than the truth of God. But there is hope. One of the tragic things about sin is that all sin is addictive. It doesn't have to be merely alcohol or drugs. It doesn't matter what kind of sin you get into. It is addictive. And the more you do it, the stronger becomes the addiction. And the more the chains hold you. And the greater desire for that sin. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because you know that you are in bondage right now. The good news is shackles are broken at Calvary. There on the cross, Christ, having been affixed hand and foot for us, broke the chains that bind the captive to sin. And he can set you free. You can go to that fountain which has been opened at Calvary's mount, and you can be washed and cleansed. You can be clothed in the perfect righteousness of his white robes of purity 
and become lighter than snow. You can be infilled with the power of the Holy Spirit and delivered from the bondage and addiction of sin. There and only there is there hope for a sinful world. I invite you in his name to come to the cross, to find forgiveness, to find a new life, to find purity, which I know that some of you desire and would be, give anything to be set free. Come and find the truth and the love of Christ and the life abundant and everlasting. Hello, I'm Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. We are so fortunate that the righteous and just God who created us is also loving and merciful. But sadly, we too often persist in our sin. Rejection of God has so gripped our culture that we're now expected to believe that men are women and women are men according to whatever their own emotions tell them. Just a few months ago at our Senate confirmation hearings, the newest Supreme Court justice could not answer the question, what is a woman? We are at a pivotal time in America, and it is crucial for you to understand what's happening and why, as well as how to respond to it biblically. We want to share a newly published resource with you to help you do that. We'll send you the booklet, Gender Insanity, The Radical Left Reinvents Reality, by our own John Ray as our thanks for your generous donation to help us continue to proclaim truth and defend your freedom. In this short book, you'll discover how transgenderism is not a product of science, but is an invention of radical leftists in university English departments. This ideology is putting children at risk from a medical establishment that will now inflict puberty blockers and surgical mutilation on confused children. Find out more in this concise booklet. And if you're able to give a donation of $50 or more, we'll send you the booklet plus the new DVD, The Making and Meaning of Marriage, featuring an exclusive message from Dr. Vody Bauckham, preached at Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church. Dr. Bauckham is one of the boldest, clearest thinking pastors in the world right now. And in this message, he shows our current social confusion on marriage and even what constitutes a man or a woman is driven by a rejection of God. In the Garden of Eden, Satan convinced Eve to doubt the word of God. And today, Satan continues that same scheme with great success. But in this DVD, Bodhi Bakal provides deep biblical theology on the nature of marriage and of human beings created in the image of God. Replace the counterfeits of the culture with the truth of God through this powerful DVD message, The Making and Meaning of Marriage. We'll send you the short booklet, Gender Insanity, The Radical Left Reinvents Reality, as our thanks for your generous donation. And the booklet plus the DVD message from Bodhi Bauckham, The Making and Meaning of Marriage, as our thanks for your gift of $50 or more. And as you receive these clarifying resources, your donation will be helping us to broadcast these much needed truths in a culture that has turned its back on God. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 111-63, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free, 877-297-8409. Or go online to djkm.org forward slash TV. We live in a culture that promotes and revels in confusion. That confusion tells us that what's most important is what's inside of us and that we don't need to conform ourselves to anything outside of us. If you have male biology but feel like a woman, then consider yourself a woman, and the rest of us will too. But the problem is that God's reality has a way of breaking through. The Bible tells us that because we're sinful, we suppress the truth and unrighteousness. That means we actively push the truth down, even though it keeps popping back up. You see, no matter what the culture says, deep down we know evil and insanity when we see it. It's no surprise that those most publicly active on behalf of their sins behave the way they do. 
Think about the angry protesters after a Roe v. Wade was overturned, or the activists who tried to get businesses shut down when the owner declines to bake a cake for a same-sex wedding. That kind of visceral anger is a product of guilt and shame. The way out of that guilt and shame is not to get the world to go along and pretend you're right and virtuous when you know you're not. The way out of that guilt and shame is to confess it, to repent of it, and to receive forgiveness. And I want you to know, no matter what you've done, no matter what sin is engulfing you right now, God offers that to you right now. As my pastor, Dr. Kennedy, said earlier, the shackles of the sin that enslaves you were broken when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Because of his atoning death and his resurrection from the dead, you can be forgiven, transformed, and delivered by putting your faith in him. You can have true freedom. There were people just like you who had these same problems in the early Christian church. And God said to them through the apostle Paul, and such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. If you want that cleansing, if you want to be justified in the sight of God, if you want to be forgiven, pray with me now, right where you are. Heavenly Father, I know I am a sinner. I know I have thoughts and desires that are wrong and that are not what you want for me. Lord, please forgive me. I believe that your son, Jesus, died for me, that he was raised from the dead three days later. I believe that he lived the perfect life in my place that I have failed to live. And so, Lord, I receive the free gift of eternal life you offer me through him. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save me, and wash me. It's in your name I pray. Amen. If you sincerely prayed that prayer for the first time, we have a vital resource we would like to send you at no cost or obligation to you. It's beginning again. Dr. Kennedy's book for new believers to guide you in your relationship with Christ. Contact us to receive a copy today and may God bless you as you do. Please make sure to visit our website at djkm.org to check out our library of digital content, as well as our online store for more Bible-based resources to help you deal with an unbelieving culture from a biblical perspective. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Pastor Rob Pacienza. Thank you for being with us. And here's a look at the next truths that transform. We are on the forefront of a war because this trans movement is now an assault on the youngest of children uh, at elementary school level. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.